What's in your food? That depends on who you ask. If you ask GMO advocates, they might list a number of ingredients you can or cannot pronounce. Or the more popular answer might be, that's none of your business. But the more important question might be, what are the future consequences for our present actions? For years, the agriculture giant Monsanto has been genetically modifying corn and soybeans to withstand and even produce herbicides and pesticides. But as with what happened with drug-resistant bugs in modern medicine, and as Einstein so eloquently put it, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This time, it's in the form of super weeds, and even more dauntingly, super worms. The Environmental Protection Agency has launched an investigation to inspect the resistance that is developing in parts of the Corn Belt, and the unexpected um, colony of super worms that are bound to spread throughout the entire Midwest. To talk more about this, I was joined earlier by Kristen Wartman. Uh, she's a nutrition, oh, I am joined, I'm so sorry, but Kristen Wartman, nutrition educator and writer, thank you so much for joining us. Let's start off by talking about these super worms. Uh, how are they different than every other worm? Well, super worms have evolved to be resistant to pesticides and fungicides. So the problem with that is that these worms can't be, be killed in the way that other normal worms or pests can be killed. So we've created a super worm that can be highly detrimental to crops. And I know that, uh, as I was just saying, that these super weeds came around first. Monsanto created the special seeds that were supposed to be uh, restraining um, all diseases. But an even more ominous disease came along, and it created a toxic herbicide. So Monsanto had to battle that, and in order to battle that, they used that toxic herbicide, made money off of the thing that they created that had the problem. Are we going to see the same thing with the superworms? Is this all about profit? I'd say it's very likely. Monsanto's main agenda is profitability. They are the largest seed company, uh, GMO seed company in the world. They control upwards of an 80 to 90 percent of crops like sugar beets, alfalfa, corn, soy. All they care about is profit. Um, unfortunately, they don't care about the health of our planet, our soil, our water, uh, the rights of our farmers, the rights of people to know what's in their food. They're, they're primarily concerned with profit, as you say. And this profit, um, a lot of it is going to ads to oppose the Proposition 37. That's the initiative in California that would require GMO labeling. Now, advocates say it would support transparency. Uh, the Proposition 37, I should say, would support uh, transparency in the food industry. Opponents say it would hurt farmers, have an adverse effect on the economy, and hamper innovation. Uh, we're in a very bad drought right now. Uh, we could see a corn crisis. Um, I just want to know from your opinion, what's uh, wrong with worrying about, what, why are we worrying about, I guess, GMO foods when we're in a corn crisis? Well, it's a very good question, but we can't divorce climate change and issues like drought and other extreme forms of, of weather from industrial agriculture. Industrial agriculture is the number one polluter of American waterways, pollutes soil, air um, and it's it's when we're talking about climate change we can't take we can't ignore the fact that industrial agriculture plays a, a huge role in that and Kristen, I know that a lot of the um, the critics of, uh, of GMOs are saying that it is bad for your health, but I want to know from you, if you happen to know, is there any evidence in particular to support that claim? Well, the science is not conclusive at this point in terms of human health. However, there are studies to show that it has increased um, allergenic responses, could possibly be linked to cancer, um, fertility, and other issues um, pertaining to gastrointestinal health. So there are studies to show this. Um, we have to keep in mind that there's a lot of power in the, the company Monsanto, Corporation Monsanto, and what studies are actually completed and what studies are actually shown to the public are going to be really, it's going to be heavily influenced by whether or not Monsanto wants those studies out. Um, Monsanto and the FDA have a revolving door. Uh, Michael Taylor, who's the commissioner of foods for FDA, is a former vice president of public policy at Monsanto. So these are important things to keep in mind when we talk about scientific studies. 
Uh, Kristen, it sounds to me like what you're saying is that there's just not enough research on GMOs at this point and that people should be able to decide for themselves if they want to eat GMOs and that would mean labeling GMOs. But I do want to talk about the fact that right now the government doesn't require labeling GMO foods. The only labeling that they do do is for nutritional information and safety information. Where do GMO foods fall in that, in that list? Well, again, I want, I want to make it clear that we can't, we can't separate the health of the environment from human health. We are all intricately connected here. We're talking about pollution. We're talking about these things like super worms and, and uh, super pests. These are inevitably going to affect each of our, he our health. So we have to remember that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just so much to say here in terms of human health and environmental health. And Kristen, uh, uh, as I was talking about with Lauren Lister earlier, it is Financial Checkup Friday. I do want to follow the money here. I know that Monsanto has spent $4.2 million actually lobbying against uh, Proposition 37. Um, but I know other organizations that are pro um, uh, Proposition 37 are actually putting money into it, too. So it kind of seems like you're fighting fire with fire. Uh, do you have any opinions about that? Well, I think there's a huge difference there. We're talking about consumer rights, and you're talking about uh, groups that are advocating for consumer rights. What they want is consumers to know what's in their food and to have labels on their food. Monsanto wants to keep consumers in the dark. So to me, you're talking about two very different things there. And when you talk about power, Monsanto wields incredible power compared to these consumer groups. They've, uh, biotech corporations have spent over half a billion years in the past decade to keep labels off GMO foods. Now, Kristen, according to a new ABC uh, poll, 93% of Americans actually say that they want to know if a GMO food is what is on the shelves. I mean, so if so many people are demanding it, why hasn't it happened? Again, it's the power of corporations like Monsanto. We have a revolving door between our government and this corporation. So there is heavily moneyed interest in keeping these labels off of foods because companies know that if there's a label on a food, a customer is going to be much more wary about buying that food. They're going to think, well, why does this label need to be here? Is there something I need to be worried about? And I believe the answer is yes. All right, Kristen Wartman, nutrition ed educator and writer, thank you so much for your opinions.